What is going on guys welcome back in today's video we're going to talk about error handling in go so let us get right into it so error handling in go is kind of interesting because we don't have the conventional constructs like try and catch what we do in stat in go is we look at the return values and there is a second or a special return value if an error is thrown so let's say for example a very basic scenario we have a variable called number and this variable is an integer and we now give the user the possibility to input some value and to store this value in the number variable. So we're going to say fmt.scan and this result is going to be stored in number. And after that, we're going to say fmt.println and we're going to store, uh, not to store, we're going to output number in order to see what's in it. Now, if I run this and I enter a number like, for example, 12, you're going to see I get 12 as a result. If I enter something else, which is not a number, like for example, hello world, I'm going to get zero, but I'm not going to get an exception the way that I would get it in Python or Java, for example, because in Python or Java, it would say, okay, or in Python, it wouldn't say anything because Python is dynamically typed. Uh, but if an error happens in Python or Java, basically we get an error or an exception. It says, hey, something went wrong. I don't know what to do, crash the program. In this case, we don't get something like that. We can, however, still catch an error um, based on the return values of scan. So what we do in Go is we get the return values of some functions to get an error variable as well. So the scan function returns two values. The first one is not really important for us, so we're going to just place an underscore here because this is just some return value. But the second one is the indi indicator if an error was thrown or not. And we're going to call this error or ERR. And we're going to assign those two things to the scan functions. Now you can see, okay, unused variable error. And we can now do the error handling. We can say, okay, if the error variable here is not equal to nil, and nil is like null, and if no error was thrown, this error variable is going to be nil, in fact. But if this is not the case, we can print, okay, fmt print line, we got an error. And I can then say return negative one, for example. Otherwise, I can just do nothing, or if I wanna do something special, I can say fmt print line, or actually we can just take this here and put it in here. Um, actually, we don't need to do it like that. We can just do it like that. And then we can see that if I run this and I pass an ordinary number like 66, you can see we got 66. But if I pass a word, which is going to cause an error, we're going to see we got an error. Now, if I'm interested in the exact error, I can also go ahead and say fmt.println error. And then we're going to see what error actually is. And if I enter now a word here, you can see expected integer. Now this is basically telling us that we entered a string when we expected an integer. Um, this also works for different things. For example, if we divide by zero, uh, or actually if we divide by zero, we're not even getting an error, I think, because if I say something like FMT print line 10 divided by zero, you can see that it's not going to let me compile it because it says division by zero. So if I try to save this and run this, uh, it says division by zero, so I can't even compile that. But this is how we catch errors and how we handle errors in Go. Now we can also go ahead and define our own function um, and let it throw an error. So let's say we have a function, some function, and it takes a parameter, uh, let's call it param, and it's going to be an integer. And we're going to say, for some reason, we're just going to say if the parameter is 60, I don't like the number 60. So we're going to say if param equals 60, we're going to throw an error. Otherwise, we're going to do something. For example, otherwise, we're just going to print uh, the number that we got as an input plus, I don't know, 10. Just a trivial function here. And if the number is 60, if the parameter is 60, we're going to return. Uh, or actually, do we have a return value? We don't have to return value. We need to return an integer and an error if we want to be able to return an error. So error is a type. 
Um, so we're going to return a negative one here. And we're going to return the error and the error is going to be errors dot new. And for this, we need to import errors. So we need to say import errors like that. And then we're going to have the error message. I don't like 60. And as a convention in Go, we only use lowercase when we when we talk about error messages. So I don't like 60. Now, of course, we need to return in this case as well. So we can return actually instead of printing, we can return the parameter plus 10. And we can return nil for the error. So if we check if the error is nil, it's not going to be uh, an error. So therefore, the, the function executed properly, we don't need to catch anything. And we can now go ahead and um, say my return value is going to be ret and error is going to be equal to some function called on the value 80, for example. And then I'm going to FMT, or actually, we're going to say, okay, if the error, and we're going to call this one here, error one, error two, and we're going, oh, no, error one, down here, also error one, and this one is going to be error two down here. So error two is that if the error two is not equal to null. So if we have or nil, if we have an error, we're going to handle that error, we're going to say, okay, format dot print line error and countered. And we can also print the error. So FMT print line. Um, and we can print the error two, which is going to be the message that we defined up here, I don't like 60. And if this error is not thrown, so else, we're just going to print the return value like that. Let's run this. In this case, of course, we have the input from the first, so I'm going to input a number and then you can see 90 because we entered 80. 80 is uh, an accepted parameter. So if I pass 60, we're going to get the error message. As you can see error encountered, I don't like 60. So this is the basic way of handling errors in Go. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting the like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.